Did your body like immediately change? Immediately. Immediately. What, what Winstrel, what happened with me with Winstrel was my body, you know, I was 19 at the time. So it was kind of like, you know, you're, you're in decent shape. Yeah. It was my athletic ability. Like that one for sure was performance enhancing. Like Tom, I'm telling you, like I could like fully tomahawk dunk. Really? Like I'm talking about like tomahawk <laughs> dunk, like legs open. Like I could throw the ball in. What's up, guys? Derek from ourplacemoreadages.com. Today, we are going to be reacting to Chris DeStefano's podcast with uh, Tom Segura recently called uh, Juiced Up, um, episode 10. So in this episode, I actually skimmed it through, and Chris talks about his uh, use with anabolics in the past to be uh, competitive as a basketball player, interestingly enough. He talks about all the kind of performance enhancing outcomes he had from it, what it did for him, um, how jacked he got off it, what his bench press was like on it versus off it. And interestingly enough, the compound selection, the guy was literally using stenozolol for two fucking years straight. Like a, like two years using an oral steroid straight with no breaks, which uh, we will get into shortly about uh, my thoughts on that. But we're going to kind of jump around in the podcast to all the different parts about gear. So obviously it's uh, you know it's a little bit scattered, so you might have to bear with me while I jump around a bit, but some pretty you know funny stories in here and some pretty interesting shit, and he seems like a funny guy, so definitely check out his stuff. It seems like he is a comedian on the rise, so like for all I know, he's like already super well-known and there's like no point in me saying that, but just in case, you know, check him out and uh, let's get into it. And, and, um, and uh, when I was using steroids, I was about 17 my senior in high school, all the way through 19 uh, sophomore year in college when I got caught with a pack of syringes by my father. And oh, he didn't know. He didn't know. And my father's only rule, only really rule was, you know, don't use no needles. So the interesting thing about this is stenozolol, also known as Winstrol, is in a most often found in oral preparation. Most people are using the pills as opposed to the uh, Winstrol suspensions and whatnot and injecting it. So, you know, presumably he was using some sort of test base along with his Winstrol. I can't imagine the guy was injecting Winstrol for two years. Like if he had the choice between oral and injectable, I can't imagine he would have been choosing the injectable preparation, um, but you never know. But we at least know that he was uh, painting shit too, not just taking orals. But Winstrol is the only compound I recall he actually names in the podcast. I could be wrong though, I skimmed through it. So I guess let's see what else he says. No needles, you know, he's like, you know, you're never gonna use heroin, you're not gonna use steroids. Okay. You know, and then I, he re it was actually one of the only times in my father's whole life he's ever been like truly upset with me. Where so I was, he was super pissed. He was, he was like genuinely like disappointed. He was like, I thought you were like just this f amazing white kid that was dominating everybody else, but you're on the fucking juice. Yeah. Like he was so angry and I'm like, yeah, like I'm, I wanted like the competitive edge. And he was like, you played division three basketball. Yeah. Like you're not going anywhere. Right. You know what I mean? Like I can understand if you're juicing cause you're, you know, you're trying to walk on at North Carolina, <laughs> right? Right. but you genuinely, there's a girl on your team in college yeah. and that's a true story. <laughs> Shout out inclusivity, but right. you know, so I, so, like what an interesting compound choice as a teenager when you would you would think as a basketball player what's the logical thing you're going to do take growth hormone you know like why would i not be using something for injury prevention and or to potentially make myself taller to be a more viable candidate to make it into the nba um but instead <laughs> he's using fucking winstrel which you know can help i guess in terms of uh athletic performance in terms of uh actual force production and whatnot but in basketball you know your allocation of funds would be more uh useful elsewhere so wait is there any downside to steroids because of course i was tempted but and I, and I knew um a couple guys in high school and then a couple guys that didn't do it in high school but they went to college and you know when you go back like right. back back home you'd see them right. and i was like what the fuck man <laughs> yeah. like dude got huge, huge. And i can't imagine that tom segura does not already know that there are in fact downsides to steroid use like i <laughs> But I still never did it, but I was always like, you know, curious. Yeah. I don't think that there's actually a downside. I mean, I know they say, oh, if you take HGH or some types of steroids, you can get cancer. But mm -hmm. it's like, dude, like you can get cancer from anything. A lot uh, of things, yeah. You know, vaping, everything could give you cancer. Let's look at some of the hormonal implications of even taking 10 milligrams of Winstrol per day for 14 days, let alone a higher dose for fucking two years. <laughs> so here we have alteration of hormone levels in normal males given the anabolic steroids to nozolol. And here they talk about 
14 day application using only 10 milligrams per day. And we're gonna get into some of the before and after blood work. And I will kind of break it down for you guys actually once he kind of gets into the Winstrol component because I realize I'm probably jumping the gun a little bit diving into that study. But basically, as you would expect, even minor doses of anabolic steroids are not necessarily doing nothing. I actually think steroids, because I think we're having a big problem now with entertainment and sports, especially baseball, I'm very pro to just have an all-steroid baseball league. It'd be great. Why throw them out? Yeah. Just have the league. My things with baseball is let's have everybody use steroids or who wants to, and then every you know inning or, or once a game, we give their best hitter an aluminum bat. Yeah. And you let them just fucking maybe kill somebody in the infield yeah. because, the, the, the you know, it's drowning. Dude, it's, uh, I think all sports. And also, you know what would be great is in football. Like, obviously, some guys already do. But to have a guy have, like, a marginal year yeah. and openly be like, this summer, <laughs> I'm juicing my fucking brains yes. out. And then he comes back and he rushes for, like, 2,600 yards. Yes. And they're like, oh, steroids are, are amazing. Amazing, like, dude. Yeah, I want to yeah. see that. Yeah, I think, like, as a culture sometimes, you know, like, we we take kind of, like, very, like, you know, drastic actions. Like, as a matter of fact, I, cause you know, again, you mentioned me being a physical therapist. So when I saw your injury, the way you fell, you know, I was watching that as a physical therapist. And I said, I can't believe how he fell like that. Like that was an insane thing. And I was thinking like, maybe he fell like that because he's, you know, eating so much. And he was like, the only way I can ever go on a diet is my fitness pal's not going to work for you. <laughs> it's like, I need literally need to be an amputee. Dude. If I'm an amputee, then I can't get the food in my face. Cause I have no arms. It's, it's Okay, I'm going to I'm going to jump ahead to the next uh, part about uh, anabolics. Dude, every time every time I get naked like I cuz I'll like work out so hard and actually even try to diet and I'll just look in the mirror and I'll be like, "What are we fucking doing here?" Yeah, what are we like, doing? "Why isn't my body changing?" Yeah. But, you know, winstrel's the key, so yeah, I'll dude. let you know how it goes, dude. Dude, I'm so hyped to juice. If you want to get back on a cycle together, dude, I'll do it with you. I swear to God, dude. I swear these comedians just like all like the joke about taking gear but never actually doing anything. Like how many times has Brian Callen for the past like five years been like, I'm hopping on fucking TRT. And I just, does it ever fucking happen? I don't think so. I will do fucking, I'll do steroids on the live show. You just get me the <laughs> syringe and you, it could be a mystery steroid and I'll just fucking light myself up. Yeah. Okay, maybe he was injecting Winstrel. Like, I don't know. Cause it sounds, uh, he hasn't mentioned otherwise. And he's talking about syringes. He's talking about Winstrel as the sole anabolic of choice. And I've not heard any in information to imply otherwise. So kind of interesting. Whatever it is, dude, was what was the okay? <laughs> what was what happened when you stopped? Was it a, a notable holy shit drop? No, you know what happened when I stopped is I kind of started to get these things called brain zaps, where like I would be like you know in school or like playing ball, like I you know I played Division three basketball, and like my brain would just go like that, and it would I would just go like that, and I thought, and I was telling everybody, like I got to the point where I got so nervous that I like told my mom, I got neurological CAT scans, they thought maybe I had a brain tumor, all that stuff, and my dad finally was like, when are you gonna come clean? He's like, you know, I'm not gonna fucking rat you out, but when are you gonna come clean and tell everybody why you get them zaps? And I'm like, yeah, I don't wanna say it, I don't wanna say it, and then finally I just had to tell my mom and the doctors, like, oh, I, you know, I know like you don't see anything, but like, it could it possibly be that I was using Winstrel for two years and then just immediately stopped, and the doctor was like, yeah, that's, that's it, that's stupid. Winstrel for two years and then stopped. So as far as the brain zaps thing, I would just be speculating. For me, I would think something to do with, now again, it's kind of odd how it didn't happen the entire time he was on, despite the fact that he was definitely shut down. Like you would think he'd be severely estrogen deficient and probably has to do with some neurological degradation to the point where I wouldn't be surprised if that would be the root of the issue. But again, really odd that it's happening when he's coming off. Is it some sort of hormonal fluctuation where things are kicking back up? Is it, uh, you know, the estrogen and, I don't know, just overall deficiency catching up to him after two years randomly out of the blue when he stops? Tough to say, but, like, that would be my first guess is looking at the estrogen receptor activation kind of facet of the equation. But getting into, again, the Winstrol study. So here, presumably the guy was using more than 10 milligrams a day or at least what would equate to more than 70 milligrams a week. And if he was injecting it, obviously the bioavailability is significantly higher where you're getting far more bang for your buck from each milligram that you're putting into your body where you're skipping first pass entirely. So in this, we're looking at literally 14 days of fucking 10 milligrams, which is nothing. Here we have week one and week two. And as you can see, LH and FSH levels obviously drop fairly significantly pretty quick. Testosterone levels get chopped in over half in a matter of seven days, bro. So you can just imagine if you're on what would be like a performance enhancing dose, like 10 milligrams per day is really not that crazy. I would not be surprised if he's using 
far more than that. And I would think that you would imagine the guy's testosterone be pretty fucking low, as well as his SHBG probably in the ground, as well as estrogen probably pretty low as a kind of indirect consequence of that, and probably leading to a lot of his issues. And obviously Winstrol as a solo monotherapy compound, not exactly the best choice, given, in, especially in fucking basketball, its effects on like joint integrity and whatnot, like that is not one of the choices I would be making for performance enhancement. Does it fucking work? Yeah, it like gets the job done, I guess, but it's, uh, especially without a base of test in there, which I don't know, maybe he was using that too. It sounds like he was just potentially pinning Winstrol on its own. Like obviously who is to judge, you know, a 17 year old kid who doesn't know what the fuck he's doing, probably just takes whatever he has access to. But just, you know, in a scientific terms, it's a pretty uh, horrible idea, <laughs> which I'm sure he would tell you the same fucking thing, but I'm trying to give you the scientific uh, justification behind why you would not want to do Winstrol only, even though he is talking it up pretty heavily and saying how amazing it is how much his body composition composition changed, how much his uh, performance increased. He's about to get into how much his tomahawk dunk changed being on Winstrol. And it makes it sound pretty fucking enticing, but I promise you Winstrol is not the go-to compound if you are a basketball player. If you would have told us that six months ago, you wouldn't have just, done all these scans. Yeah, you wouldn't have just cost your mother $25,000 in hospital bills. I was like, sorry, mom. <laughs> I was like, I thought my insurance covered it. <laughs> you know, like, like just now, did, did your body like immediately change? Immediately. Immediately. What, what, Winstrel, what happened with me with Winstrel was my body, you know, I was 19 at the time. So it was kind of like, you know, you're, you're in decent shape. Yeah. It was my athletic ability. Like that one for sure was performance enhancing. Like, Tom, I'm telling you, like, I could like fully tomahawk dunk. Really? Like I'm talking about like tomahawk dunk, <laughs> like legs open. Like I could throw the ball in. You and then I, when you stopped, that stopped? Yeah, I could, I could hang on to the net. Like I could. <laughs> Like he's doing a, this guy would be a great uh, advertising campaign manager for fucking Stanozolol. Not, not that, not, I couldn't dunk like, I, you know what it was? I could probably still jump as high as I could, but my, I never got tired. Yeah, never, that's what I, ever. One of the guys told me that he said um, the thing. See, the interesting thing about that is like, I don't know how much he was using, but when you're talking about like the uh, hematologic properties of Winstrol on its own, it's not really like an ideal compound to drive increases in hemoglobin and whatnot. Like it's not a heavily, I don't know, erythropoietic type compound. And I'm surprised to hear that, especially given the crash in his estrogen that subsequently probably happened when he was on it for two years. You would not think he'd achieve such a drastic increase in like actual cardiovascular endurance like that sounds kind of odd to me like i'm not surprised the increases in like acute force production relative to a lack of increase in body weight allowing him to you know get up and fucking tomahawk the shit out of the fucking ball but i mean uh, <laughs> again not the ideal compound choice which is interesting to hear the uh, story and presumably he's using like really potent shit because um back in uh like, i don't know how i think chris is like mid or late 30s right now so when he was using this shit, it was probably um, a time where people were using more like pharma grade Winstrol, I would think. And uh, if he had access to like really potent, accurately dosed shit, you know, it's not surprising that some of these outcomes we see very comparable to uh, even some Olympic sprinters that have been busted with this shit. Like obviously people are using it for a reason. It does work. It's just, again, in a basketball player context, would it be the most ideal choice? Like frankly, if you have nothing as a base estrogen wise, it is just a poor choice in general, but... Anyways, that's besides the point. About the steroids, he's like, steroids aren't, aren't like, it's not going to, muscles are not going to pop on you. Yeah. It's that you can go train like a lunatic and yeah. you're not going to be sore. Yeah. So the next day you can just fucking do it again Never and do. again and again. I would put up, I would put up uh, two plates and then 225. So I guess whatever that is, 250, 260, like 15 times. Really? On Winstrel. Like, dude, it was like just throwing it up. Off Winstrel, it was like, you know, a plate, maybe a 45 and a 25, well, that's, maybe. Well, that's 275. You were with 25s on each side? With 25s on each side. So whatever that's that 275. was. 275. I could do it. I'm talking about like with fucking ease. Holy shit. With ease. And then in my sophomore year, in the beginning of my sophomore year, when I was still actively on Winstrel, because I told you I was playing Division Three, Division One scouts were coming to look at me, like Stony Brook. Um, um, uh, Stony Brook was the big one. Queens College, which was a very high Division Two, coming to look at me dude. by the my senior year. No. Nobody, dude. Nobody. Not zero. When they came, they were like, we want to see the tomahawk. Tom Wide open legs. Because you got to understand, I was playing Division three basketball. So, I mean, people had asthma. They would have, like, lasagna <laughs> after the games. Like, this wasn't a real sport. They must have thought you were a fucking dude, freak. I was fucking, I would, like, I was, like, jumping over people. Like, it was, my dad thought 
Like my high school made a huge mistake. My dad was like, I can't, this is the Chris I've been talking about. Cause my dad, cause basketball. So he broke his heart that you were on Winstrow. Broke his heart, dude. Cause my dad was like, after all the you know hard work we put in, cause my dad, a thousand jump shots a day, every day. That's what we would do. Wow. He would grab my rebounds out there with two busted knees, thousand jump shots a day, every day. He would have the broom. Did I ever tell you about my dad's broom? Uh -uh. He would have a broom up. Cause my dad's whole thing was like, you need to, you need to mimic shooting over seven footers. Like you need to arc <laughs> shots. Oh. So he, it, this is, I'm talking about like in a public park in Ridgewood, Queens, which is a very culturally diverse neighborhood. You had people from all over. All walks. Broomstick up. He had a broomstick up, and on the broomstick, written in tape, was the word Leroy. He named the broom Leroy because he was like, "Let's be honest, it's going to be a seven foot black guy, no?" And then so we just call it a Lee. So I would shoot over Leroy, and he, that's what he said to me when I was in Winchester, like a dead serious conversation. He's like, "What about all the times me, you, and Leroy had <laughs> in the park?" You disrespected us all. <laughs> you know, like Leroy's pissed too. Dude, he made Leroy. I've said this too on, on, on a podcast too, but like my dad, like in Ridgewood, this was like what was called like a Ridgewood coffee. Like I, yeah. my dad and his. Okay, I think that was the last point about the steroid use in question. Um, I might've missed a part, but I think that was a, I think you get the point. The guy was on Winstrol for two years straight. No mention of any testosterone whatsoever. He mentioned I was doing injections. So this guy's using like, Literal fucking stenozole ampules, apparently, for uh, however many times a week. I'd be interested to know what his dose was. Um, but um, interesting choice and something you would not be able to get away with now in uh, any sort of league with testing, obviously. Now, of course, he's talking about, like, fucking high school. But, I mean, this, uh, you know, he makes it sound pretty great and whatnot. But if you're in uh, college sports and you're being uh, drug tested, this is something that will get picked up incredibly easily, easily to the point that it's like, it's not even about trying to time the test with Winstrel because the likelihood that if you have any sort of randomization whatsoever, you're going to, you're going to get fucked if you're on Winstrel. So don't try it. And frankly, it wouldn't even be the frontline recommendation in my opinion anyways, um, for a basketball player. So Interesting story nonetheless, though. I have never in my life heard of somebody abusing the fuck out of Winstrol for such a long, prolonged period of time to the point that they didn't even try cycling off. They didn't try a different compound. They literally stayed on the exact same shit for two years straight and were fucking jumping over dude. So um, funny story by uh, Chris DeStefano and uh, check his stuff out. And uh, always cool when I can intertwine pharmacology with some sort of mainstream appeal and... Um, yeah, let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Like, subscribe, check out my blog, moreplacemoredates.com. Follow me on Instagram, at moreplacemoredates, Facebook, Snapchat, bitch, you, Twitter, TikTok, Apple Podcasts. And by the way, the side effect profile of Winstrol, aside from just testosterone suppression, it's fucking ruthless on lipids. It's ruthless on your SHBG. If you're not injecting it, you're using it orally like most people would be doing. It's going to be hepatotoxic and whatnot for your liver. It's not exactly a ideal compound to be deploying. And that's something I just thought, <laughs> thought I would bring up. Like, there's... There's a lot smarter choices. So anyways, if you want to support the channel, you can check out anything I'm associated with in the video description below. My TRT clinic, it's all telemedicine from the come for your own home, as well as my recommended lab tests and diagnostics, especially if you're planning on doing exogenous hormone assistance. You should have accurate and high quality baseline blood work, mid-cycle blood work, and post-cycle blood work. Do not neglect your health when it comes to this shit. You will regret it. And anything else I'm associated with, it's all in the video description below. Thank you guys for watching. Talk to you soon.